Hey guys, you're looking at a Fender 50s Road Worn Telecaster in a blonde finish. I really like this one because it's uh, the first year they were made, 2008, and you can see it's got some really cool wear on it. Definitely a lot more wear than the ones that they're making now. If you look at a 2019, 2020, you're not going to have any of this stuff. <clears throat> you can see that it's got a bunch of uh, the finish worn away on the neck. The hardware is, is very um, vintage looking. It's got a lot of oxidation. And actually it's not going to come through too well here, but there's some checking on the body, which is, here you can see it a little bit there. The checking is really nice if you're into that. So this guy is ready for setup. Just polishing these frets up real quick. Gonna polish the frets and change the strings. But I won't be polishing any of the hardware on this. It just makes no sense to me. You got a road worn. Why I'd wanna go and try and shine up all the hardware on here. Like I might do on other guitars. After all you're going for. A road worn relic look with these guitars so I just leave the hardware alone one, one thing I noticed when I was polishing up these frets was just how nice and smooth and rounded the ends of these frets are and believe me that's not always the case especially with road worns because the necks don't have hardly any finish on them they tend to get fret sprout more often these are just buttery and smooth and sweet um, Gotta tell you, if you're gonna get a road worn, if you can find one between 2008 and 2010, that's what I would suggest. And this is coming from somebody who's bought and sold, probably coming up on a hundred uh, Fender road worn guitars, and that's strats, you know, tellies, P basses, jazz basses, everything. But uh, definitely the first three years. They were doing the Road Worn series. They took it a lot more seriously at the Fender factory. They were spending more time on them. And just the usual Fender thing. After a few years making some money on these, they decided, well, let's make more money and spend less time on them. So now you can just see <clears throat> the ones that come from the factory just don't have anywhere near the same amount of relicking or time spent on them. You can tell they're just using some very basic templates uh, and every guitar looks exactly the same. It's easier. Got that cable on the first fret. We'll keep the strings kind of in place. There's our truss rod adjustment and loosen. Yeah, this guy's loose. Let's see where that puts us. I don't know. That's maybe three quarters of a turn. Okay. Neck back on, tuned up. Recheck the relief. And I can just fit. 0 0.006 it looks like just barely between 0 0.005 and 0 0.006 so we'll start there a little bit of buzz there probably the action might be a little too low yeah so our actions down below 0 0.050 I should bring this all up a tiny bit and then go from there. So I will just use the little slotted screwdriver. Take all these up a tiny bit. I like to get them at a little bit of an angle on the ends. That way the strings kind of follow the 
radius of the neck. Okay, tuned up. Down low, no buzz happening. So sounding good so far. So far, it seems like this next like and where it's at. So far, so good. You got pretty low action and uh, playing good all over the neck so far. I just was playing all over the neck just to see if there's any kind of buzz things or anything weird happening. I did notice the A string down low on like the third, fourth, and fifth frets. A little more buzzing than I'd like. So I pulled out the fret rocker and sure enough the fifth fret is popped up just a tiny bit. Mostly just under the A string it feels like. So that should be pretty easy to fix. A little fret popper. Got that, that one little spot on the fifth fret pounded down. And now it's a lot better. Let's see if we're in tune. Still a little tiny bit of something, something there. Sometimes you just bang on the next fret a little bit. It helps. Yeah, that did help. Pretty buzz free now. Okay, this thing's playing great. I found one other fret, uh, it was either the 12th or the 13th. Again, under the A string, it was just a little popped up. And uh, if you do many setups, these things come in handy. It's just a brass um, fret setter. It goes over that fret and you can tap it down if you find some high spots. I also highly recommend this. Um, it's like a neck rest that you can get from Stumac. <laughs> and uh, you keep that under the neck when you're doing something like pounding down a fret and it keeps your neck all safe. But now we got that A string totally clean up and down the neck. And all it's left to do is intonation. How you was right on. The B might be just a tad sharp. We'll bring back, these are the barrel saddles, so kind of affect both the E and the B at the same time. All right, didn't want to make you sit through that, but all the intonation's done. Sounded pretty good. Quick check of the electronics.
summarize what we did in this setup. String gauge is 10 on this telly. And check the electronics, check neck relief, change the old strings, polish frets, set string height, set intonation, check the pickup height, polish guitar, and down tuned it for shipping. String height ended up at 0.060 at the 12th. Neck relief is 0.006 measured at the 8th.